In this video, we're going to go over the basic usage of GrabCAD print. The first step will be to import a file. So we can go to our project panel and click add model. And I've put some files on the desktop. And we'll select the hub. Alternatively, if you have the files up, you can also just drag and drop them in. But in this case, we just want to work with this first one. So I'll delete that out. Right now I'm set up to use the F370 template, but this would work the same way if I were using a 270 or 120 or 170. It just depends on which printer you're connected to. But that is an important step because making sure you're connected to the correct printer will change the available settings for you when processing the file. I'm going to stick with an F370 for now. So we can right click and move our mouse to orbit around. I can click and hold the mouse wheel to pan and then if I want to move a part I can click and drag the part to slide it around on the build plate. And notice how if I go all the way to the edge and I go past where I can print it's going to turn the model red and it's also going to show an outline of the build chamber as red showing that I'm not able to actually print this part where I've placed it. So I'll put the part back and we're just going to go one by one down the, the settings here so I can select a model and a lot of the settings will not allow you to do anything until you've got a model selected because a lot of these settings are specific to the model. I might have two different models or more in here and I can change the settings per model. So I have the model selected and when I do you can see it's both highlighted up here and highlighted down on the build plate and from here I can actually change the units. But we're going to leave that as millimeters. Next we have tray settings. These are settings that are global to the entire tray. So again we have an F370 selected as our printer. It's giving us all of the possible F370 options because we're using the template printer. If we were actually connected to an F370 over the network this wouldn't it wouldn't allow you to make the selection. It would actually determine which material was in the machine and that would be the material that's selected. You'd have to change the material in order to change the selection. We're going to stick with ASA and now when I've made that change from ABS to ASA it's telling me that it's made some updates to the settings based on that material selection. Now we've got a number of other settings on here. I'm really just going to go through the ones that are the most common use if you're interested in learning more about some of these other ones that may not be changed as commonly you can hover over the, the information button to, to learn more about it. Underneath support material again we only have one selection for ASA would be QSR support and then the same thing, T14 tip, we don't have a different tip, so we can't make a selection here. And those boxes are grayed out, the little arrows grayed out, indicating there's no selection to be made. Those are really the main selections that I would make on this screen. You do have a few other selections. You can go from normal to draft mode if you want to print something faster and use less material, but it wouldn't look as good, you can do that. And then the purge tower, that's going to be this part right here. You can't get rid of this part because this is actually going to increase your build quality every time you switch between model and support material on each layer you need to purge material from the next head that's about to print in older machines it used to spit that material out into a purge bucket but in the F series it prints a purge tower with it if you turn this off then all that purge material would, would actually get done on the part itself making the part look very ugly so those are our tray settings we're going to use here we're going to move on to our model settings so again these settings are specific to each model on the tray I can't make a selection right now because none of my models are highlighted I only have one anyway so I'll select that and as soon as I do you see I've got the option for my infill so I can change it from sparse sparse double dense hexagram sparse high density and solid and of course as we go into higher and higher densities we're going to use more material and the part is going to be more solid and therefore a bit more robust for the most part sticking with sparse high density is a good choice but if you want to use the least amount of material maybe this part isn't going to actually be used for anything you're just going to sit it on a table and look at it or maybe it's just a very first prototype you can go with sparse just to reduce the amount of material that's used and there's a number other of other settings here you can explore but really this is the main setting that that you're going to change on this screen Next we've got our support material. Again for the most part smart is what we're going to stick with and then if you're interested in learning more about each of these you can hover over the information icon here and this is going to give you an explanation of each of them. 
again, if you don't know any better and don't have a reason to change it, stick with smart here. Now use model material is an interesting selection here because this actually allows you to reduce the amount of support material that you're using when printing a model. To demonstrate this, I have loaded in a model that is shaped like an L, but I've turned it upside down, which will force there to be support underneath this area. And I'm gonna process this two different ways. One with smart support with use model material turned off and the other with smart support with that turned on. So let's process it this way first. And if we turn on our all layers selection, we can see our green is our model and our orange is our support material. So that's how that's gonna look. And when we reprocess this, and then I'll click use model material. I'm gonna reprocess this. Now, if we go back to all layers, we can see it's using model material, so green material in this rendering as support material, except for in the layers that interface with the tray and the actual model at the top. This increases speed and you can generally very quickly snap those model supports off of the part and then you're only cleaning a little bit in the cleaning station. Then we get down to arrange. So this is gonna be arranging the tray. This becomes more useful when you have a lot of parts on the tray. I only have one, so I don't really need to arrange things, but we also can play with the model spacing between it. And if we have multiple trays, we can arrange the entire project. Next, we have orient. So of course, pretty straightforward. I can change the orientation in X, Y, or Z by clicking the plus or minus. I can type something in here or I can use the auto orient button. So let's say for instance, I type in something strange here, then maybe your model imported looking like this. When I click auto orient, it's gonna calculate the best way it feels this should be printed and it's going to place the part there. So of course, it then, then came back and determined that the way we had it was really the best way to print it, which I agree. So that's how it put it. Now we have the option to orient a face to a plane so I can select that button and then when I move the mouse over the model, you'll see the plane moving around the model as well. So for instance, if I wanted this top surface to actually be oriented with another plane, I'll click on that face and now I can orient it with the top plane, which is really how it's oriented right now, left, right, front, back, or bottom. So for instance, maybe I wanna flip this upside down. This will be an easy way to do it. I select the top face and I orient it with the bottom plane now it's flipped upside down. Now this wouldn't really be a great way to print this model because we'd have support structures all inside here, but that's just showing you in many cases, maybe you want to orient something uh, yourself over doing auto orient. That's a quick and easy way to do that. Next we have scale, so we can keep uniform scaling on and then I can do something like make it 125 and you see with uniform scaling selected, everything was scaled 25. If I unselect that, I could say this is 100, but everything else stays 125. And now we've got a probably a, a hub that is not gonna work as well. So I'm gonna turn uniform scaling back on, and that is all you really need to know about that tab. At this point, we're happy with this setup. We want to process it and prepare it for the printer. So I'm gonna click the show slice preview in the top right. This is gonna slice our model and give us an estimate of how long it's going to take to print and how much material it's going to use. All right, now that this is completed processing, the first thing I like to do is click view estimates and this is going to take five hours and one minute to print, use 11.6 cubic inches of model and 1.5 cubic inches of support to print this model. Now that I have this slice preview, I can either play an animation and watch it step through it, or I can change it to show all layers and I can, I can step through the layers. Something I like to do is do up to layers. So this way we can very quickly scroll through the model and just see what it will look like as it's printing. This is also an interesting thing to show students if they've never seen a 3D printer work before. You can play this animation and show exactly how this model is going to print layer by layer. Now that this is processed, we can actually send this to the printer. Now I'm not connected to a printer right now, but what I can do is go up to file, export CMB, and I can save this file out onto a thumb drive and walk it over to the front of the printer and start the file that way. 
If you are connected to a print printer over your network, then you'll see the printer that's on your network. You can select it and click print and it's going to send it right to the printer and then it will show up. The printers that you have connected will show up here and you can see the print queues in this view down here under the schedule.